Okay, let's get this out of the way first. Color correction and color grading do get mixed up a lot, and a lot of people use them interchangeably when they do actually have two different purposes. Color grading is when you adjust the colors of an image to achieve a look, style, or even a mood. But color correcting is adjusting the colors to make them accurate. You can think about color correcting as like the foundation before you start editing. This is super important because if you don't do this, you could end up with photos that aren't consistent with each other. If you have a photo shoot and you don't color correct, you might end up with some photos that are more orange and some that are more magenta and so on. This is even more important if you are using something like presets or LUTs because you won't have a baseline for your images so they'll all end up looking a little bit different. But with that, let's get into color correcting an image. First, I'll import an image that I have. Now this is a raw photo, which means it has the raw data from the camera. So Affinity Photo is gonna open it up in the develop tab. If you are not using a raw photo, you can still do this by importing the photo and opening it up in the develop persona. But I always recommend shooting raw because it will give you the most data to edit and correct. Inside the develop persona, it's a pretty straightforward process to color correct. You can usually just go down the line of the basic tab to color correct your photos. So with that being said, first thing we'll do is adjust the exposure. As you can see, this image is a little bit dark, and we can show that even further if we come over to the histogram. You can see that our peaks are pushed really far to the left. Basically, the histogram is going to have your shadows on the left and your highlights on the right. And since most of our peaks are kind of leaning towards the shadows, we're just going to want to up the exposure a little bit so we can move those over. Basically, the most ideal histogram is one where you have a bell curve with your peaks going towards the middle and nothing is touching the left or the right or peaking over the top. So now we'll just come down into the exposure and we'll use this exposure slider to adjust it. Now this slider works in stops, so the value that you see that is changing is the stops of light that we're changing. So for example, two would be two stops over or we can go negative two stops under. And you can see in our histogram how that is adjusting our image. So since this slider works in stops, if you happen to know exactly how many stops over or under you exposed for, you can adjust that in here. Otherwise, if you're like me and don't know, you can just kind of play around with the slider until you get something that looks best. But I think somewhere right around here is gonna work good for this photo. And we can see that in our histogram, we move those peaks over a little bit, so now nothing is touching the top. When you're doing this, there are actually a couple handy tools that Affinity Photo gives us to make sure that we are correctly exposing. We already talked about the histogram, but you can also come up to the scopes tab to see a waveform. The way this graph works is it shows you your exposure levels going across your image. So on the left here, you have the left side of your image, and on the right here, you have the right side of your image. And you can see we do have our highlights over here that are clipping because we can see that over in the scopes here because they're going right off the graph and clipping. Another tool to show this is if you come up to these buttons up here, you can actually show your clipped highlights or your shadows. So if we click on our clipped highlights, you can see in bright red, Affinity Photo shows us exactly where our highlights are clipping. Now to fix this, I don't really want to bring my exposure down because our subject, which is these flowers here, they are properly exposed. So I don't really want to bring the exposure down too much. Instead, what we can do is come down to shadows and highlights down here, and we'll scroll down. And now we can just bring these highlights down until there are no longer any clipping highlights. So we just want to bring it down until we don't see any more red. So right around negative 93%, you can see there's no more clipping highlights. We can show that over in our scopes and we don't see any more red. And just to make sure, we'll also check our shadows over here. So we'll click on the clipping shadows button. If you have any clipping shadows, they'll show up in a bright blue, but I am gonna bring those shadows up a little bit because we are pretty close to the bottom of the graph here. So I just wanna give myself a little bit of extra room and I'll just bring it up right around 25%. And that'll just give us a little bit of extra room, especially when we get into editing and we wanna do some color grading. But with that, you can see we no longer have any clipping shadows or highlights, and it looks like our image is properly exposed. Before we move on, I do want to touch on these other sliders here. So this black point, if you move it all the way over, this is actually going to adjust the black point of your shadows. So if you bring it all the way over to the max, your shadows are basically going to become pure black. And you can see that because our shadows are now in that bright blue because we are clipping. I usually don't mess around with the black point too much. I'll usually just leave it at zero. Because we use that shadows and highlights as well as the exposure slider to adjust our exposure, we don't really have to mess around with the black points too much. And lastly, before we move on, is gonna be the brightness slider. I usually try and stay away from the brightness slider just because the exposure slider is gonna give you a more natural looking exposure rather than the brightness, which is a little bit more artificial. So next, we'll come down to enhance. And just going down the list, you can adjust your contrast if you want to. I'll usually leave the contrast at zero because I like to use the curves to adjust my contrast. But if you want to add some contrast in here, you can adjust that in there. 
Now, as for clarity, I will add a little bit in here, but please do not overdo this. A lot of beginners like to crank this clarity all the way up and it makes their image look fake. I'm sure a lot of us, and including myself, are guilty of cranking that clarity slider, but please just keep it low if you do plan on adding some clarity. I have a rule that I try to never go above 30%. For this image, I'm just going to have it somewhere between 15 and 20. I think right around 18 is going to be just fine to add a subtle bit of clarity. Now with the saturation and vibrant sliders, if you plan on color grading your photo, I do recommend bringing the saturation down a little bit and the vibrance up a little bit. This will basically just give you a little bit more room to play around with colors when you do get to color grading. Now last and certainly not least is going to be the white balance. And this is where you're going to actually color correct your photo. Now it may be hard to see, but this photo is actually a little bit on the warmer side. If you do know the color temperature your image should be, you can just input the Kelvin value in here. But if you don't know the temperature it should be, we have a couple options. First would obviously just to be to play around with these sliders until you get something that looks as natural as possible. So we can just mess around with those until we get something that looks properly white balanced. But Affinity actually has another handy tool to adjust our white balance for us. So if we come over to our tools here, you can see we have a white balance tool and we can just click on that or hit W on your keyboard. Now, if you happen to have used a white balance card, a color checker, or even a white piece of paper on your shoot, this is where you can select that. And a quick side note, if you happen to have used a color checker or something similar on a different photo from your photo shoot, you can import that and select that card with your white balance tool and then just copy the values that you get from that, from the white balance down here into the photo that you are currently editing. Now with this photo, I didn't have any of that, so we'll just have to find something that should be on the gray scale. So something that should be basically just pure gray or even white. Now unfortunately, the closest thing we have in this photo are actually going to be these highlights up here. So we can just kind of click around on these highlights because they are supposed to be pure white until we get something that looks pretty natural. So I think something right around here is going to be about as close as we get. One thing though, if you look closely into these highlights, you can see Affinity Photo added a little bit more magenta than I would like. So I'm just going to dial this tint slider back a little bit until we get basically a pure white. And I think something right around there is about as close as we're going to get. Real quick, I just want to jump in here and say that sometimes it can be kind of hard to actually see what the colors are of something. So if you want to get a readout of exactly what colors you're hovering over, if you come down to the panel down here and click on info, whatever your mouse is hovering over, it will give you an RGB value of that. So that way you can see exactly how much you need to shift in a certain direction in order to get the perfect white balance and color correction. So for example, if we're hovering over this area, it should technically be pure white, which would mean that the RGB down here should be at 255 for each. So if you're finding it hard to actually see what colors you need to adjust, you can use this tool to actually get perfect, accurate colors. But with that, you have color corrected and properly exposed your image. So now you can just come up and hit develop, and from there you can add all the edits and the color grading that your heart desires to your photo. Sometimes you might notice that certain colors in your photo look a little off compared to what they were in real life. And there's actually a pretty easy way to fix this. The way that I recommend you do this is if you come up to HSL in your adjustments and you click on that and bring that up, you can actually choose which color you think is off. So for example, let's say you had a sky in your photo that was slightly more magenta. You can adjust that by selecting whatever color the sky is most closely related to and adjust the hue shift of that. Now in this example, let's say that these flowers here, they were actually more orange and for some reason they turned out more yellow in this photo. So we can select this yellow and if we want to take it even a step further, we can select the picker here and select the color of those flowers. And now we can adjust the hue of those flowers. As you can see, it's pretty drastic when you move the slider around. So you just want to do some subtle adjustments to adjust the color of whatever thing you need to change. So now you can see the before and the after of that. So that's just a nice and quick way of editing any certain colors that you have that are slightly off and just making them a little bit more accurate. But that pretty much does it for this video. If you guys found this helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. I hope you guys have a great day. See ya.